What is up everybody, it's your boy Bird here and thank you so much for stopping by. Today we're going to do a tier list which I don't think anybody has ever done. Have you ever wondered inside the lore of Black Desert how strong your main character actually is? Well, we're going to take a look at that right now within this video. It's going to be super fun. I know the lore behind all the characters. I know very big details onto the side stuff that are happening with her. And we're going to go through this entire machine here to try and figure out who's the strongest character in BDO and of course we're going to talk about why now in a sense of this thing called a tier list of course everybody's going to get pissed off because you know we all love our characters but hey we're just going to look in lore and we're going to turn a blind eye to an opinion so we're going to start with god mode and i think people might be kind of understanding why there is even a tier called god mode and then we're going to go into the s and the rule is that s can never win against god mode god mode will always win against s the same thing happens for each in tier underneath now we have to start um basically talking about only the characters and their awakenings because that's actually the black desert lore succession is a little bit of a plot hole introduced for the sakes of gameplay and to be honest, not a single succession ever beats Awakening to begin with, with one exception, just one exception within the lore. And we are going to talk about that in a bit. But overall, we're talking about our characters, like the classes with the, pers the prospect of their Awakenings. So let's begin pretty much not alphabetically, but rather I, ha I have organized them slightly in a way so that we do not lose track of the lore process of the entire thing. And also we kind of talk about them in little packages, which of course, because they are related to one another. So first one is the warrior. To be honest, in an RPG, there always has to be a warrior because no RPG is without, no RPG is ever possible to happen without a warrior. That's very funny considering the fact that how unessential warrior is in Black Desert Online's lore. Unfortunately, warrior is absolutely worthless. He is a poor individual with not that bad of a writing, but he doesn't do anything. Warrior, unfortunately, is simply absolutely stupid. And to be fair with you, I know everybody that likes berserk i know you don't like this but unfortunately warrior is instantaneously c tier it's just dumb warrior is simply absolutely worthless these guys get betrayed out on a whim they pick up the worst case that you possibly could pick up they get betrayed for it they lose their leader and they spend the rest of their days trying to retrieve their leader's sword whom they just believe that has his soul inside now his name is goyen and we did get to meet how the guy fought and how the dude looked back in the magnus question if you've played this but unfortunately warrior into the grand scheme of things is simply a peasant with a freaking broadsword. It, it's as simple as that. I, I know, I know people like the big two-handed steel. I get it, sure. But we got to look at it like this. Warrior, extremely unessential. We got to move then to our elf ladies. Now, the reason for which we got to move our elf ladies is so you understand. I've marked this thing here specifically so that you would understand the power structure of the world of Black Desert. And there is a very important rule. Anything that comes out of Elvia is stronger than anything that we have, with, of course, a few exceptions. There is always exceptions to the rule we're gonna go with archer archer is a luthragon he is one of the first born sons of sylvia the goddess sylvia basically we're talking about not a person who is a direct descendant of godhood but rather a person who is being touched by godhood a person who has been seeing what's been happening with elvia a person who's been able to somewhat successfully wage war against her doom's forces just archer is an instantaneous a tier archer is simply an elf from another world he is different he is built different he is exceptionally strong within the lore he's one of the few people who are capable of actually communicating with her goddess post her fall and the goddess told her about the truth of what's happening with the kama sylvian tree he was the first guy to desert the war against kadoom and come into our world with a couple of other people simply because it was the wrong thing to do archer is freaking based if you play, play archer in black desert you should be proud of your choice because he is a great character with tons of depth and he is going to be one of the main movers dare i say of the plot further down the line the same thing with awakening ranger but awakening ranger is a different story see while he she never had any communication with sylvia her goddess essentially or anything like this she is a daughter of the daughter so essentially sylvia is her grandmother she is a janelle and as such she is also touched by the goddess's power and she is exceptionally strong 
Now, so the ranger is not that essential for the lore, and I'm putting her behind the archer simply because, well, ranger, yes, she's just simply an Elvia creature, and as such, she is very powerful. So now we have to move on to the other elf lady, and of course, we're talking about the Awakening Dark Knight, or Dark Knight. Dark Knight is exceptionally strong. They meddle with the powers of the Abyss. This is power which is greater than what the rangers and archers are doing, so instantaneously, Archer, sorry, uh, we're putting the Dark Knight in front of everybody. DK is simply insane. They are, in essence, the witchers of our world. Think of it like that. She is a Vidir, which makes her a lot more pow powerful than the Janelle. In general, just DK is simply the stronger elf amidst, amidst all the elves. They hold the key to the redemption of the Vidir. That's something very, very important. Now, the next trio is so you understand what it means to be touched by gods, okay? This is something that will pretty much let you understand the power structure of our world without the Elvius influence. The next three ladies that we have over here are the Guardian, Draconia, and the Mystic, starting with the Guardian. Whenever you are a direct daughter or a granddaughter of what is believed to be one of the direct deities or entities which have created the world according to the lore when you are as close as we got to an origination point of our universe of black desert or rather should i say at least our realm our world as we know it the world which we tread upon you are bound to be instantaneously within s tier guardian is simply a daughter of one of the primordial forces which ordained the world as it is the same thing happens for draconia she is is the I believe she is the youngest daughter of a dragon but not just that she is draconian in particular she is tightly related blood to blood so this is something exceptionally important when we're talking about black desert the deities which have created this world are the three dragons or at least it's believed so to be Bonha, Markthanan and Labreska and speaking of Bonha we have to also talk about mystic now how the hell do I have this conversation man like here's the thing this is the mystic channel in the black desert community and i'm sitting here trying not to put my girl in god mode like i need to be honest with you i need to be honest with you this is this is a hard choice but let me let me provide evidence for it so while guardian and draconia are direct descendants of the of course markthanon and labresca um respectfully we are looking into them inheriting a little bit of power, a portion of power of their predecessor. Now, this puts them in a very, very strong position. However, in Mystic's situation, they are directly infused with from the living deity as it is. We're talking, of course, about Banha. Banha pretty much took Mystic out of the water, saved her life, and infused her directly with his power. In my book, if we're to look into what is more important, you being the daughter of a deity and essentially losing power as that gradually progresses down the line, or you being infused by the live entity Banha, in my eyes, it is simply both mystic is simply awakening mystic is simply better than guardian and draconia she simply wields the power of an active and alive god so that is something exceptionally important and not just that the way we know that martin and Lebreska and uh, banca created the world was from mystic story it is the story which she heard during her being saved by Banha. Now, there is a rumor whether or not that's true, but it's as far as we've ever went into an origination story of BDO, and this is as credible as it ever got. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about Mystic Guardian and Draconia literally being all together into the S tier. Now, let's talk about the next two pair, and those are very, very, very important pairs. The Witch and Wizard, the people who practice Elvia magic within our world, the people who've been pretty much responsible for not one or two calamities within our world. How do you rate somebody who uses evil power within our world for somewhat of a anti-hero types of matters? Well, to be fair with you, who is stronger than Witch and Wizard? They're kind of identical because they kind of do exactly the same thing. This also translates a little bit within their gameplay as well. Now, if we are looking to say Elvia is always automatically A tier and they are essentially meddling with Elvian powers, then we have to put them somewhere within the A tier. And this is exactly what we will do. I do not believe a single 
bit that they can be simply stronger than the than the elves but they are using goderite power which is essentially power the power which is kind of one of the main issues within the realm of elvia this is what elvia is fighting hadoom's influence the power of the goderite everything that has been happening there and you have witch and wizard basically practicing the evil powers now they're in direct conflict with the elves just because of this the elves detested this types of behavior so in regards of who is stronger than both of these man that's a hard one and i'm gonna leave it as such i just simply cannot believe for slightest moment that you could beat you being a protege of a power is direct directly making you stronger than you being from the original world where that power is it's just simply using that train of thought now the next one will surprise people let's talk about hash man hash is one of my favorite characters within the game i don't even play hashashin to be fair with you but i just can't help myself but love hashashin as a character hashashin is unfortunately at start a very foolish individual who goes through a redemption arc only to almost doom our world and save it in the end by redeeming himself in front of his god his god empowering him and of course him taking what is the equivalent of sauron from lord of the rings if we have hadoom being equivalent to morgoth and then we have ibidor which is equivalent to sauron well pretty much that's what hashashin did hashashin is absolutely nuts hashashin did what the elves could not do hashashin is instantly s tier the S tier, however, will be slightly onto the back because even though, yes, he was empowered for the sakes of what his duty was supposed to be, he did save the world from an instantaneous demise, but still, you, you can't just, you know, when we're talking about you being slightly empowered for the Godhood for a mission and then you being a direct descendant of a god or you being essentially infused from a living power of a god i have to put hashashin a little bit into into the back now let's go into kunoichi and ninja see unfortunately a reoccurring thematic within black desert lore is that what was written about six to seven years ago for our world as it was is very underwhelming compared to what we have right now is lore especially with the elvia stuff especially with everything that has come down from the heavens with the old kingdom of Urzeka, all of, all of those things unfortunately they're quite underwhelming now awakening kunoichi and ninja however both of them have significantly better stories and they have significantly higher impact than warrior i'm going to put however kunoichi in front of the warrior and a very important thing would be to say that ninja will be in b tier instead See, Ninja is a, a lot more active and a lot more martially um, capable individual compared to Kunoichi. Ninja was referred to, at least in one point in the lore, as far I remember, he was um, not an iron machine, but a machine of war, in a sense. They called Ninja a machine of war. That's a very cool title to have. And not just that, Ninja is actually a great ca character. He's a good guy. He is genuinely a person of compassion. He's a person of love. And in my book, not just that, but being called, a, being, being called a war machine, that's some crazy stuff, man. Uh, Ninja is definitely, for our worldly standards, which is pretty much BNC, Ninja is definitely up there. And now we gotta talk about Lan. Man, Lan is insane. Lan's lore is absolutely insane. Um, Lan is uh, a very conflicting individual uh, in terms of how exactly and where to put her in this entire ordeal here. But I gotta be completely honest with you and say that Lan has to be automatically A tier just because of the Crimson Glaze. Lan is rumored to be using an ancient relic. Now, whether or not that relic is coming from Elvia, it's a relic from a thousand years ago. Of course, we're talking about the Crimson Glaze. And uh, whether it's an Elvian relic or it's an elf or it's a relic that has something to do tied to one of the primordial forces, we do not know. But she is using power which was so unbelievably strong to the point where a calamity had to occur in order for her to lose her memories and lose that power to kind of go forward to recover the glaives and this time claim power over them lan was essentially a villain during her origin point she was pretty much slaying everybody left and right and at no given point was she able to pretty much even feel a little bit of compassion she was a she, she wasn't she wasn't an anti-hero she was straight up a villain lan is instantaneously a tier now she is definitely stronger than Witch and Wizard just because she slew like a fiend. So I'm going to put her definitely in front of Witch and Wizard into the A tier. I was flirting a little bit about putting her even in front of all of the elves simply because she's using a relic. Now, 
If she was using a Relic of Hudum, basically the Crimson Glaives, definitely in front of the A tier. Possibly, if a little bit more lore to, to kind of come from um, Awakening Lan or Lan's perspective, then she could even go into, into S tier because she is using a power of a god. We do not know, and I couldn't find anything onto whether or not Lan is using Hudum power or she's just using some forgotten relic from the past, this or that. There's heavy suggestions about it, but you know, you don't always get lured to a power of what is the originator of the Elvia realm. So I, I just simply do not know. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt and just keep her in, in the middle of A tier. Lan is amazing. Let's talk about Tamer. Very basic story, but a story with meaning. Tamer is a person who pretty much grew. Um, almost in, in an isolation, spending her time training, she then was able to pick up a very powerful weapon, I think it was called the Celestial Bow Staff, or something along these lines, and of course she has Haylang um, uh, right around her, so that's a little bit of a beat here, the fact that you have a beast of this magnitude fighting side by side with you is definitely better than what's happening with Warrior and Kunoichi, instantaneously behind Ninja. Um, let's talk about Musa next. Musa is a very, very cool character. He is an incredibly capable individual in terms of martial prowess. He is exceptionally strong and also a very cool character within the lore. I highly suggest you guys to go ahead, open up the video lore site, reach, just read a little bit of Musa, he will capture your attention. Musa instantaneously in my eyes in front of Ninja without just any any thought and now we have to talk about of course his counterpart the Maewa now Maewa is man Maewa is interesting pretty much the character comes in from the gutter of absolute nothingness and she works so incredibly hard to be able to unlock the potential of her final weapon it is something that a story of just keep on pushing and it's a story of mentorship it's a very cool story but I cannot see man I cannot see Maewa just going into that B tier, I just simply can't, even though her story is absolutely awesome, there is no power behind it, there is just simply training with failure behind it, and unfortunately, man, I'm gonna put her between Kunoichi and Warrior, and now we gotta talk about Ape, we gotta talk about Ape, guys, Monkey Boy is busted, here's the thing, Striker is a thorn at my side for simply being a mystic player, but into the lore side of things, Striker is absolutely crazy. He is a great character, and not just that, he won the Martial God Tournament into the East, which is a very important tournament. Essentially, nobody is better at Martial than him, which means that he is instantaneously above Musa. However, this is something that really captures you when you start understanding Striker lore. See guys, Striker lore became so unbelievably powerful to the point where he couldn't find an enemy worthy of, of being his opponent. He's trained so hard to find himself to the point where the training and the power which was inside him literally took form and manifested in front of him. And that's essentially a metaphor of the only guy who he thought he could fight, the only person, the only being, at least from what he has encountered, that was worthy of enough of a fight with him was a copy of him, and guess what he did? He beat himself. That's one of the things about Striker. That's one of the interesting bits about it. That he trained so hard to the point when his body manifested a copy of himself, and then he proceeded to beat himself. I understand that it's gonna be a very weird, but dude, to be fair with you, that's a crazy story, and Striker is instantaneously front A tier in my eyes. Instantaneously front A tier. Just just the sheer idea of you becoming the most martially capable person in the world, of course, from the tournament, and then finding that there is nobody to challenge you, bro, and the only person that you could find any reason to fight was you, and then you beat yourself. Come on, man, that's freaking awesome. That's a great story. That's that's showing how strong Striker is. That's in my eyes instantaneously in front of Dark Knight, because pretty much cutting Striker credit to the fact that he is a competitor with himself eventually, and he keeps on doing this right now. So Striker's limits are pretty much infinite. It's it's simply, Striker is almost as if he's bound to be an upstart god at one point, if you if he keeps doing this. Striker is simply amazing, so for this purpose I'm putting him front row A tier, man. Now, let's talk about Awakening Nova. Man. Man, 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 man. Awakening Nova is one of the most brutal characters in the history of BDO. 
I highly recommend you guys to learn the story of Orzeka, the Empire Orzeka or the Kingdom, whichever you'd like to call it. Learn about Nova, learn about the deal with Axiom, the King of the Dead, learn about her Awakening Weapon Sting, about her shield, the Kuturan. But long story short, in the ancient kingdom of Urzeka, there was the Thornwood Goddess, which was the primordial deity, essentially, of theirs. Like, this is this was, in their eyes, the ultimate deity. There was nothing above this. And that deity granted them the all-wishing and giving tree called the Kuturan tree. That tree gave birth to... Sarka himself, you know, so we're talking about a god who gifted a god to bring birth to a god. So you might wonder, well, where the hell is Nova into this? Well, if we have the Thornwood Goddess gifting the Kuturan tree, who then created Zarka, then we're having Nova at the Kuturan tree level because Nova is using a thorn of the Kuturan tree. Nova is using a shield, which is essentially the bark of the very same tree. Nova is not just that, but she is capable of summoning the fallen soldiers, which were sacrificed or fell for the Kuturan tree, and she has essentially the power of necromancy. Nova, in terms of succession or even awakening both, no matter how you look at it, she is simply an astonishing character. Nova is almost god tier in my sense, but not exactly. It's just Nova is on that Hashashin level. And I'm not really sure if I can place Nova in front of Hash. I am not sure if Nova can simply beat the fact that she, you know, she's not a daughter of, of dragons, right? And she's not being empowered of a dragon who is currently active, you know? She's not basically the avatar of Banha. But in reality, Nova man, here's the thing. You permanently wielding godhood, or, 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 or permanently wielding artifacts of godhood, in my eyes, man, that puts you right in front of Hash. Like, you just simply can't have it. Nova is a beast of a character. Not just the story, the way it's, the way it's said, what she has done, but rather it is simply the fact that she is using a full-blown arsenal of power. And yeah, Nova is absolutely insane within the lore. Whenever we talk about gods, ladies and gents, you need to understand that you do not have to be a point of origination. You don't have to be a person who has seen the origination or it just... What if I told you that this individual is immortal? What if I told you that Sage is perpetual? What if I told you that Sage has been so unbelievably powerful to the point where upon his death he uploads his consciousness inside this quote-unquote a phylactery or a computer and after some time his consciousness can simply manifest himself as a body once more and not just that what if i told you that sage has many of these throughout the entirety of the world sage is complete god mode Sage in Black Desert lore is a perpetual being. He was here before Hadoom was ever a thing. He was here before the elves ever were a thing. He was here before the Black Spirit was here. He was here rumored to have had touch with all himself. The guy who empowered Hashashin. Oh my god. Sage can literally be a deity and he might not even know it. His full name is Ruxmagia Dekia. He is the creator of the Dekia Lantern. He is the person who was capable of saving Idana from being corrupted by the Black Spirit. He is the person who created Ataraxian. He is a person who has worked side by side with gods themselves. Sage is complete god mode. And if you play a Sage in Black Desert Online, you have to know. You are literally playing Sage who is God mode with forgotten memories. Put that into perspective, Sage forgot his memories and he is still God mode. Imagine if I was making this tier list, man, and Sage was not in this kind of scuffed state right now as it is. Sage has power and knowledge above anybody out here. It doesn't matter if you're the avatar of a god when this guy has pretty much been rumored to be working side to side with gods on things. Like, come on, man, that's insane. <laughs> Sage is completely insane. And it's not like he is immortal in the sense of they was gifted to him. Nothing was gifted to Sage. Sage got to that level. He is a perpetual being. 
Sage is absolutely astonishing. It, it's, oof, man, I can't even, my head can't even fit it. Congratulations if you picked Sage. Sage is amazing. Now let's talk about, um, of course, Land of the Morning Light Sisters, Awakening Megu and Awakening Musa, or Megu and Musa. See, those two are very interesting. Um, now, here's the thing. People always talk about them in a yin and yang fashion. People always say Megu is the chaotic one, while Wusa is the orderly one. And that's a fair estimate based on what you know within the lore. In reality, Black Desert World is meant to be chaotic. In reality, the world which we are in has its own fabric and it, its own strings and it always plays the same melody. And we have a little bit of a twist. While many of the content creators and many of the people who kind of feel that they know about lore, practically they have absolutely no idea. In reality, Maegu is the one that is the wise one because she understands the fabrics of reality, while Wusa is the one that challenges reality. It's not that Wusa is order, Maegu is chaos, it's the fact that Maegu serves orderly to chaos, but Wusa is chaos towards the established order. And not just that, but Maegu is also, let's say, the fox spirit, predecessor of death, which is pretty much within the mythos. In reality, if I had to label them, they're both going into... Man, I'm not sure if they can go into A tier, but I'm still gonna do A tier for both of them. But of course, we have to put Megu first and Wusa after, simply because Wusa is aware and she is playful with it. She is just a little bit of a more cool, cool persona, while... Uh, sorry, Megu. While Wusa is a little bit more... I don't know, Wusa has this feel like she is just simply better, this feel of arrogance, this feel of... Yeah, you get the idea. And there is a reason why, of course, lore pretty much unfolded around them as it did. Basically, they understood what their truths are, but rather, Maigo already knew, but Wusa was kind of like, oh, oh, okay, I see. Huh, I need some time to think about it. So, are they stronger than Elvia deities and a guy who split himself in two just so he could fight himself? Absolutely not. We're talking about... Will Maegu be capable of beating Moose and Injun Tamer? Definitely. Would Wusa be able to do that? Definitely. We're talking about people that use the primordial forces, or rather, strongest forces of Land of the Morning Light. So, it, it's only fair for them to go into the A tier. Now, let's talk about Sork. Sork is busted. I need to be honest with you, Sork is busted. Sorks were the first beings, even though it's a little bit funny how they managed to find a way to achieve immortality, they're all to be believed to be the senses of Carton. So, Carton is the Sork who pretty much, one way or another, was found, uh, found a way to immortality. What happened with Carton is a little bit weird, but Carton, one way or another, left his sight, or her sight, I'm not sure if that's actually, probably it is her sight, left her sight down below. Now, the sheer fact that Sorks are capable of achieving immortality, the sheer fact that they use pretty much almost a hex magic in a sense, they are pretty much tapping into the core forces or like the negative or like the dark forces within our earth is definitely a tier now to be fair with you i want to cut sork some slack here and i want to say if we're talking about sorceress who found carton scythe and if carton scythe truly grants immortality then we're talking about s tier action and that's exactly what i'm gonna do i'm gonna play sork at bottom s tier just because of the fact that carton's sight is capable of granting immortality and not just that sork is an incredibly potent exceptionally powerful character now one thing which kind of is this is this is going to be an iffy s tier i really wish i had like something in between them or something like that but it, just, it makes me it makes me feel like if we're talking about potential i didn't give sage the potential i didn't give many of these characters full potential but sork is right now with carton's um carton's scythe and not just that sork is super busted like she is super strong within the lore and that's something very important now let's talk about oh my goodness oh my goodness let's talk about valkyrie man everything that has to do with alienism is complete bullshit Unfortunately, the religion of Elion is simply nothing impressive. The religion of Elion has nothing to do with reality. It is a lie through and through. The religion of Elion has nothing to do with strength. It has not it, it grants you absolutely nothing but zealous intent. The Valkyries, however, are very martially. I would say not necessarily active, but rather they hold power. They train 24-7. It's, you know, they have an entire academy. And the only reason for which I've, I'm putting the Valkyrie 
in B tier is simply because, as stupid as they are, they summoned a significantly lesser version of Zarka, and of course, Anslar, the Valkyrie, was capable of beating Zarka. The only reason for which I'm not putting them in C tier right next to Warrior is just because they have an example of a very strong um, opponent whom they were capable of defeating. So, Valkyrie is up there into the B tier. It's just so weird. It's so weird. <laughs> Now, uh, let me just uh, switch uh, wizard over here with this wizard because, yeah, it's, it's just better to have the awakening one inside. So, let's talk about Berserker. Ladies and gents, if there ever was a more stupid character than Warrior, this would probably be it. But I'm still going to keep Berserker in between uh, Maiwa and the Warrior simply because Berserker, at the very least, uses a weapon of ingenuity created by one of the top dwarven blacksmiths. And, of course, we're talking about the Iron Buster. And, um... His entire lore is a little bit, it's kind of like, eh, it's lore, but it's still more than Warrior. Everything that Warrior has done, Berserker has pretty much doubled in terms of just details and everything that has happened. So, Berserker, like our character Berserker. So, it just, unfortunately, Zerker is, 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 is out there with just the militia, man. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Shy. Shy is... Shy is weird. Shy is in general in Black Desert. Shies are very, very weird. They are special. They're definitely, it's, it's like, how do you rate them? Do you put them in B or C tier? When they have magical power, or rather, magical prowess for A tier, but their physicality is just so inconsequential. And I'm, I'm just gonna give Shy's B tier. They see the world and the fabrics of reality for what they are. They're most in tune with Black Desert. And this leads us to our final pick, and of course, Corsair. Man, Corsair is weird, because Corsair for so, for, for so cur huge power within succession to pursue being a crew members of otters and freaking turtle what was that otters and papus my bad no otters and what was the other? it was otters and turtles right the, the turtle guys it's so weird and this is gonna be a little bit of grievances that i have with corsair and it's just you can't have a character who is literally wielding some sort of almost in, in a sense some sort of a godly power which originates from the sea which you could tie one way or another to what's happening with Maewa with the frost stuff or the flamey the frozen flame of the spear what's happening with mystic and her stuff this character here had such an opportunity man such an opportunity but what we have is just poor delivery from Pearl Abyss's side and warriors don't worry about it you're not the worst Corsair could have been just astonishing for the longest period of time her lore stated that she was the daughter of the god of the sea which then was retconned and it was reworked into something different and now all of a sudden she is the daughter of igor Bertali. just just found an artifact that granted her a little bit of power which she forsook for the sakes of adventure it's so dumb man <laughs> it's so dumb well ladies and gentlemen this pretty much summarizes the tier of the characters in this game man I hope you guys enjoyed. It's fun to see all of these characters kind of duke it out in such a particular tier list. And probably people had no clue how strong Sage was. Well, that's about it. Enjoy yourselves, guys. See you soon.